Welcome back to another episode of Confessions of a Serial Seller. The guest today, I am honoured and privileged to have him in my in our presence. If if you don't know this gentleman, my question would be, where the hell have you been? But for those of you that don't know him, he's written, I believe, and been involved in about 19 books. And one of them probably changed my business, for obviously for the better, called The E-Myth. And I read The E-Myth Revisited, I would argue the best business book I've ever read. And Michael Gerber, thank you so much for joining us today. My delight, Tony. My delight, my delight. And by the way, it's no longer 19, but 29. Wow. And books. So since I did my research on you, you've written another 10. You need, you need to update Google. <laughs> what can I tell you? That's incredible. <laughs> and, and I know Inc. Magazine, I believe, voted you the number one small business guru in the world. Yes, they did. And they do. And I'm honored to be so called. Well, look, the you I, I know from experience how you've helped me, but more importantly, you've helped so many of my clients. Your name has come up numerous times when I speak to my clients because everyone that's looking to scale from a small business to a a, a bigger, a medium-sized business, I say the first thing you've got to do is read the myth. It changed everything. So, Michael, for, for my guests that maybe don't know about you, you've not read any of your 29 books. Tell, tell us a little bit about your journey that led you to the number one small business guru. Well, it was untoward and it was late in my life. So you have to understand, I wasn't one of those guys who at 16, at 17, at 19, created a company, then sold it when I was 21, and then started another one. Um, the stories we hear, the stories we hear, the stories we hear about all the greats who ever did anything, they started when they were 12. Yeah. I, I, I didn't. Yeah. Um, I was a an encyclopedia salesman. I was a saxophone player. I was a poet. I was a hippie. I was a beatnik. I was a framer of houses. Um, at the age of 39, I was passing through Northern California, visiting my brother-in-law and sister. Yes. And my brother-in-law owned a small advertising agency called Cuneiform. Oh, yeah. And it was in Silicon Valley. And he asked me to do him a favor. He said, Michael, I got a problem. One of my clients is having impossible time converting the leads we create into sales. Um, can you visit with him and see what the problem is? My brother-in-law's name is Ace. And I said, Ace, why would yeah. I visit him? I don't know anything about business. Yeah. And I don't know anything about high tech. So what in the world would I talk to him about? He said, Michael, you know more than you think you do. Yeah. So let's just visit with him and see what happens. So I said, of course. And we did. We met with Bob, the owner of this startup, Silicon Valley high tech company. And uh, A says, guys, I'm going to take off for an hour, get to know each other. And he splits. And so Bob looks at me and says, so Michael, what do you know about my business? And I say, nothing, Bob. Yeah. And I, I didn't. Yeah. And he said, um, in sort of a, if not resigned, but troubled manner. Yes. Well, if you don't know anything about my business, what do you know about my product? Yes. And I said, less than Bob. So he said, Michael, if you don't know anything about my business and don't know anything about my product, how can you help me? Of course. I said, great question, Bob. I haven't a clue. Yeah, Ace thinks Ace. I can. That's hilarious. You like Ace. I like Ace. And we've got an hour to kill, so let's find out. Yeah. So I began that meeting with Bob at the age of 39, my age, 39, not Bob's age, uh, with two beliefs. One, I don't know anything about business. And two, Bob does because he owns one. Yes. And so I began to ask him questions. So Bob, tell me about Bob. Tell me about Bob. Tell me about. And the more questions I asked Tony, the more it became obvious to me that my second belief 
that Bob knew something about business was absolutely <laughs> flat out wrong because all of his answers were yeah. anecdotal. Yes. But at the same time, something came to me that I did know something about business. I knew that selling is a system. Yeah. And I'd learned that selling is a system when I sold encyclopedias as a young gentleman. Yeah. And that young gentleman didn't know anything about selling. And of course, the sales manager said, perfect. Then you're not spoiled by what you believe to be true about selling. I'm going to teach you exactly what selling is all about. Yeah. And all you need to do is memorize it. Yeah. And so he gave me a 15 minute script and he sent me home with the instructions to memorize it and come back the next morning. And I did. And then he gave me another script and said, memorize it and sent me home to memorize that. And I did. And I came back and I repeated exactly what he sent me home to memorize. Yeah. And then he said, Michael, absolutely wonderful. You passed the first test. You did what I asked you to do. Nice. Now I'm going to show you exactly how those words are meant to be said. Yes. So listen to me. So listen to me, Michael. And then he recounted those exact two scripts but in a way I'd never heard them before. Yes. And then it became memorizing the affect yes. of that language, yes. not just the words. Now, Tony, we haven't discussed this. And obviously I have no idea what your position on selling is, but obviously it's the field you're a master of. That's what but I... <laughs> I mastered the script and then went out in the street knocking on doors. And every single time I varied from the script, I got into trouble. Yeah. So I went back to the script and back to the script. I became the script. Yeah. And when I became the script, I became immensely successful at converting those candidates as owners of Encyclopedia Americana to yeah. the proud owners of same. Yeah. Well, I realized as I'm talking to Bob that his sales engineers had no clue mm. what I knew mm. that selling is a system. And for that system to be effective, it's got to be turnkey. Yeah. Eat that system for me? I said, sure, Bob. Ace comes and picks me up and he said, what happened? I said, Bob hired me. <laughs> I'm now his sales consultant. Really? He said, but Michael, you don't know anything about his business. You don't know anything about his product. How in the world can you do that? I said, Ace, that's what I told you before we got here. <laughs> but I realized I knew more than I actually did. And that was the beginning of E-Myth, Tony. Wow. As I went to work on Bob's business, it's exactly how I saw it. I went to work on Bob's business to create his perfect selling system. I realized that his problem wasn't that he didn't only have a selling system. He didn't have a financial system. Yeah. He didn't have a management system. He didn't have a marketing system. He yeah. didn't have a lead generation system. And so forth, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. And Emith was born. Wow, what a story. And I must ask, what happened to Bob's business? Bob exploded with sales. It just boom. And of course, the minute that happened, Ace asked me to visit with Mary, who owned a furniture store, and, yeah. and, and Jerry, who owned a, a, a high-tech something or whatever. It, you understand it, it, it immediately... The corner was turned. And can I ask on, because when I read the myth, I thought this is so relevant to me as a sales training consultancy. But the, the version I read was about a baker store where the lady, I think. Was, yeah. So I thought, do, is your systems applicable across all businesses? And I, I'm 
I'm really keen to know how you develop these systems to make them applicable for any business. Well, it's very, very important. And it's a great question because you have to understand to me, a system is a universal process. Yeah. Universal meaning it doesn't matter whether it's a chiropractor or an accountant, doesn't matter whether it's an accountant or a landscape designer, Mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether it's an HVAC contractor, Mm -hmm. et cetera, and so forth, has absolute, makes absolutely no difference Mm -hmm. what the product or service is, Mm -hmm. that the system is sacrosanct. And there's a systemic method for approaching each and every single one of those industries Mm -hmm which effectively is what I've done in the publishing of our E-Myth vertical books. Yeah. So if you go out to the E-Myth books, you'll see the E-Myth accountant, the E-Myth attorney, the yes. E-Myth chiropractor, the E-Myth landscape contractor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are now 20 of those vertical E-Myth books. Wow. Every single one of them are co-authored by an individual who's applied the E-Myth to their practice. Yes. Yes. And because they've applied the emit to their practice, they have built a successful practice beyond anything they had done before, much like you've done with your practice. Sure, sure. sure. So in your practice, you're the sales guy. And the sales guy is the technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. Yes. Doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it based upon your unique skill. Yeah. Based upon your unique systemic methodology for making a sale. Yeah. You're selling that methodology. Yeah, absolutely. To grow beyond where you are, you've got to replicate that methodology to the point where countless other, in quotes, sales consultants yeah. can deliver it yeah. to an immensely larger number of small business clients. Yes, I totally get that. So, when you spoke about Bob, you said you realized how little he knew. Hence, you needed the sales manual. You needed the finance manual. So for my listeners who are, say, solopreneurs running small businesses like me, I'm the entrepreneur with, I employ 12 staff currently, and I'm looking to scale and grow. What's your best advice, Michael, of where do they start? Well, it's a great question introduce you to the eightfold path tell me more the turnkey process a turnkey process for designing building launching and growing a company of one to a company of 1000 mm. now you might say yeah but michael they don't want a company of 1000 they just want a sort of a bigger business maybe with 20 people 14 yeah. people six people, whatever. They're not that hungry. And I'm saying, forget about that. Forget about that. Forget about what they want. Forget about what they think they want. Forget about what they think they want to do. Forget about what they think they don't want to do. Let's just begin to approach this procedurally. Step one, step two, step three, et cetera, and so forth. So the eightfold path is very, very straightforward. It starts with a dream, a vision, a purpose, a mission, the job, the practice, the business, the enterprise. So your client will say, you'll say, I have a dream. I have a vision. I have a purpose. I have a mission. I have a client fulfillment system. I have a client acquisition system. And so forth and so forth and so forth. So my dream at the very beginning of this in 1977 was explicitly stated. My dream was to transform the state of small business worldwide. Your dream is to transform the state of selling worldwide. Absolutely. I'm just making that up. But it's pretty accurate. Yeah. My dream is to transform the state of selling worldwide. My vision is to invent the McDonald's of small business development services worldwide. My vision, Tony says, is to invent the McDonald's of selling services worldwide. Now, what do I mean by the McDonald's of? I mean a turnkey franchise prototype. 
that can be replicated, 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 replicated again and again and again and again and again and again and again in the hands of ordinary people. Yeah. Just like a McDonald's franchise has. Yeah. You get it. Totally. Totally. My purpose, my dream, my vision, my purpose was that every small business owner who follows our methodology can be as successful as a McDonald's franchisee yeah. and some as McDonald's itself. Yeah. And my mission was to invent the business development system that would have to be developed in order for me to realize my dream, realize my vision, realize my purpose through the realization of my mission. Yeah. So that's the, that's the, platform upon which every single person listening to us right now must design, build, launch, and prepare to grow their company from where it is to where it needs to be. So what's the, so what's the fifth step? The fifth step, understand the fourth is the mission, the dream, the vision, the purpose, the mission. The fifth step is your job and your job is your client fulfillment system. Yes. So you've got, Tony, a client fulfillment sales system. You know what that selling yeah. system is. You yeah. know how that selling system works. And that selling system better be turnkey, yeah. meaning you'd be able to better to turn it around in the hands of a gazillion people. Yeah. And be able to say step one, step two, step three, step four, say this, say this, say this, say this. Yes, but Tony, my business is different. Yes, but Tony, I'm not a this, I'm not a that, I'm a whatever. And hear me, that's what everybody says. Yes, but Michael, yes, but Michael, yes, but Tony, yes, but Tony. And I'm saying, screw it. Yeah. Do it. Just do exactly what I'm saying. And as you begin to do exactly what I'm saying, the realization will come and hit you like a ton of bricks. Oh my goodness. Nobody ever said this to me before. Yeah. So the job, critical, the turnkey client fulfillment system. The next step is the practice. Yeah. And the practice is the lead generation, lead conversion system, plus your lead your client fulfillment system. Yeah. So it's a three-legged stool. The practice is your franchise prototype. Yeah. The practice is your franchise prototype. Lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. Turnkey. Yeah. Written down. You follow me? Totally. Now you're ready to grow a business. Yeah. So what's a business? A business is nothing other than up to seven turnkey practices yeah chiropractor number one number two number three number four number five number six number seven doing what the three-legged stool lead generation lead conversion client fulfillment yeah. lead generation lead conversion client fulfillment seven times yes plus a turnkey management system yes so a business is up to seven turnkey practices plus a turnkey management system Get it. That's a business. That's your business prototype. Yeah. Now you're ready to grow to an enterprise. What's an enterprise? An enterprise is nothing other than up to seven turnkey businesses. Yes. Which are 49 turnkey practices yes. plus a turnkey management system plus a turnkey leadership system. Yes. And now we've completed the loop, a dream, a vision, a purpose, a mission, a job, a practice, a business, an enterprise. And that's the evolution of an enterprise from a company of one to a company of 1000. And the sucker is turnkey. And every single human being on the street can learn and apply exactly what I've just shared with you to do exactly what you're setting out to do. I love it. And I have to ask you, from the thousands of small businesses that you've personally helped through your teaching, your content, your systems, what, which is the biggest success story you're most proud of? Oh, my goodness. It's such a great <laughs> question. Uh, are you familiar with the name Dr. Ivan Meisner? I interviewed him three months ago, the B&I legend. 
Of course, b and is one of the best businesses I've ever seen. And b and I started with two people. Yeah. And Dr. Ivan Meisner. Yeah. In his kitchen. Reading the e myth revisited. In his kitchen with two people. Wow. He read the book and he said, Oh my God, this is it. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. You hear the song playing? <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> That's incredible. And and that does he does Dr. Meisner say the success was based on your learning, like what he learned from you? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Ivan and I have spoken over the years countless times. I visited BNI countless times. Yeah. Ivan has said in our interviews constantly, um, if it weren't for the E myth, there would be no BNI. Uh, yes, absolutely, every single time. And I wouldn't be saying it if it weren't the case. That's incredible. What an achievement. And can I ask if there was three bits of advice that you could give a solopreneur, a practitioner that is on the journey of growth to, be, to build an enterprise. Uh, if, and there were just three of your best tips, what would they be? My best tips are listen to what I just said. Yeah. And then do it. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> yes. Listen to what I just said and do it. And to the degree you fail to do that, you will fail to grow your company. Yeah. Period. Period. There is absolutely no alternative to what I just said. Yeah. To the degree you fail to do that, you will fail to grow your company. Your company will constantly be a terror. Your company, company will constantly upset you. Your company yeah. will constantly demand that you're doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 and getting significantly less than you ever imagined you wish to get. You yes. can't grow unless you do exactly what I'm sharing with you. That's what we built over a half a century with tens upon tens upon tens of thousands of small businesses, the smallest of the small, struggling, struggling, that language solopreneur just is so offensive yeah. to me yeah. because it's a method of reaching out to that market and convincing that market that they've got everything they need yeah. to do what they've got to do. They positioning the solopreneur as the hero of our marketplace and he's a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. I have a question. So one of my favorite films was The Founder about Ray Kroc. Yeah. I'm sure, you, I imagine you've, you've of course. seen it, right? How, how closely linked is what Ray Kroc did to the fundamentals that you teach? Well, Ray Kroc um, created his prototype. Yeah. His prototype is what I refer to as the practice. Yes. His prototype from McDonald's is what I refer to as the practice. Lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Lead generation, lead conversion, client fulfillment. The turnkey money machine that mm -hmm. Ray Kroc created and then explicated mm -hmm. again by replicating it faithfully a second time and then a third and then a fourth. Yes. And in that process of replication, he came to the conclusion that to the degree the second one doesn't operate in identically the same manner as the first one, it will fail. Mm -hmm. And so the entire reality of McDonald's follows the path that I've just described to you. Yeah. But not only McDonald's, Starbucks, every single multiple unit enterprise mm. has followed the system that I've described. Mm. Every single one of them. Our business was designed based upon that reality. Yeah. So how do you achieve massive growth? How do you achieve massive consistency? 
yes. with the brand. How do you fulfill the promise you make from the very beginning to yeah. the very end when now you're not managing six people, you're managing 60,000 people, yeah. 100,000 people, a million 12? How do you possibly manage to deliver the promised result through that massive number of different individuals, each yes. of whom leads a different life, each of whom has a different understanding of what life is all about. You get them on the same page. Yes. Hear me, Tony, on the very same page. I don't care who they are when they go home. Yes. I only care who they are when they come here. Brilliant. And when they come here, they are now wed to who we are. Yeah. And to the degree they're not wed to who we are, they're gone. Yeah. It's that simple. I love and it. so the entire methodology of a dream, a vision, a purpose, a mission, the client fulfillment system, the client acquisition system, the franchise prototype, the management system, the leadership system, the entire methodology that I've shared with you is explicitly what I'm saying every single one of your, your folks need to do exactly the way I've described it. Yeah. And I suppose it's going back to what you said right at the beginning when you sold encyclopedias, stick to the scripts, stick to the system, it works, deviate, it fails. I had to become the script. Yeah. I had to become the script. The script wasn't the script. The script was Michael E. Gerber. Yeah. I had to become the script. I had to become that script and evoke the energy of that script. Yeah. So I had to absorb that script into my very being. Yeah. That's how it felt to me. I had to absorb that script into my very being. If I'm going to be Hamlet, I've got to be Hamlet. You understand? I've got to live the part. That's amazing. I like, it gives me goosebumps listening to you. Obviously, when you started the E-Myth and you came up with these fundamentals, you didn't just pull them out of thin air. Who taught you to build what you've created? Where, where, who was your mentor? I didn't have a mentor. Um, candidly, I didn't have a mentor. What I had was the, my, my dream, my vision, my purpose, and my mission. What I had was the picture in my head about what, in fact, I was setting out to do. What I had was my experience of what's going on in the world of small, the world of the very smallest of the small, yes. um, the problems each and every one of them had. What I had was my intention yes. on transforming the state of small business worldwide. In order to transform the state of small business worldwide, I had to have a vision. In order to have a vision, I had to relate it to something. And that something was McDonald's. So McDonald's, 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 McDonald's. I've been talking about McDonald's from the very beginning of my company. Um, I've, been, I've been the most avid admirer of Ray Kroc and McDonald's. Did you ever you understand? Him? I never went into McDonald's. I didn't have to. Yeah. I could see it from the outside. Yes. And from the outside, seeing it, it was even more profound yes. than being on the inside doing it. Yeah, I get that. Did you ever meet Ray Kroc? Never met him. Oh, I mean, he, look, he inspired, I guess, you to create and have the huge success you've had. May I ask how, did. Yep. how many books has now been sold of your, the E-Myth and the 29? Well, the E-Myth Revisited has sold over 8 million copies. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So the E-Myth Revisited um, it was called by the Wall Street Journal the most influential business book ever written. Wow. What an accolade. <laughs> and it's, it's astonishing, isn't it? Phenomenal. But it shows you what can be achieved. And, and from someone like yourself at the age of 39, having, you know, no experience at that point, well, to, based on what you said, to take it to the level. I mean, phenomenal. For my listeners who are going to, if they've not read the myth, they will now, and they want to take action. They want to start implementing these fundamentals. Where, where's the best place, Michael, for them to get templates or things to help with that transition? The best place, the most important place for them to start 
is what I call in the new dreaming room. Okay. And the new dreaming room is my online version of the dreaming room that I've done for hundreds and hundreds upon hundreds of guests. Yeah. To awaken that very critical foundation within them. So they can walk out of the new dreaming room saying, I have a dream, I have a vision, I have a purpose, I have a mission. Until they can do that, they can't do anything. Yes. Once they do that, they can do everything. Yes. But understand the beauty of this is once they discover what their dream, their vision, their purpose, and their mission are in the new dreaming room online with me, teaching them exactly how to do that live. And I'm doing that and I'm doing that and I'm doing that. Here's celebrating my 85th birthday wow. on my way to my 86th birthday. I'm making a commitment to every single person listening to us right now that I am going to transform the way you think about life, about business, about growth in a very simple and straightforward process. So enroll in the new dreaming room. So Tony, go to Jordan. You can get the link to the new dreaming room, introduce it to every single person you know, and you can participate with me in bringing the dream, the vision, the purpose, the mission, the creation of an enterprise into the world you work in. Amazing. And in the process of doing that, you're going to blow everybody's mind. I will 1 billion percent be there and I know a lot of my clients will and I can't wait to join you on that journey. Michael, thank you so much for giving up your valuable time. I, I'm inspired and I know my listeners will be as well and, and I can't wait to see you live in the dreaming room. I love it. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Take care. Time and you. Bye-bye.